So now that we have some objects in our project that we can scatter onto our train, let's go ahead and show how we can set up the scatter and use our height field to actually drive where the points are going to be scattered onto our terrain. So first of all, I've added in a second tree here, and this is just imported the same way that the ash tree was that we went over in the last video. I also added a terrain to the texture, which you'll see here in a second. But let's go ahead and set up our scene here. So let's go to the scene and hit Control Shift C to bring in a new context. Let's name this terrain. And let's go ahead, lock our scene view into our our viewport and we want to bring in our terrain now so we'll right click and drag our terrain into this new folder and create an instance we also want to set this to progressive rendering now you can see that i have the terrain with a texture on it uh, just a simple texture of some colors that were exported from world machine nothing too complex there so let's set up our scatter now so We'll right click and create a new scatter. And to actually scatter things, we will need some points to scatter them onto. So let's create a point cloud and let's go ahead and rename these. So we'll name these tree PC for tree point cloud and then tree scat for tree scatter. So if I jump into our point cloud here and I scroll down, if I were to up this point count to something like 5,000, you're going to see that we don't have any points that are being generated yet. That's because we need to set our geometry here. So we need something to scatter the points onto. So let's uh, select our terrain. And now we have a bunch of points scattered all over our terrain, all randomly. Now this may or may not work uh, right away for you. They may be following the contours of the terrain, but it may not be lining up appropriately. So the way that you need to adjust that is you'll need to check a setting first. So preferences and then layout, you'll need to check this parent in place, make sure that it is unchecked. And then you need to come up to the parent option of your point cloud. And we need to set that to the terrain so that they all line up appropriately. If you don't do that thing with the settings first, your points won't necessarily move. Uh, so you'll need to uncheck that so that they move when you parent it to your terrain. Now everything should be lining up appropriately to our terrain, which is good. Let's uh, scroll back down to the bottom of our point cloud and take a look at some other settings here. So the decimate value. So if we drag this up, it's going to just start taking away some points here. So it's just kind of at random, which we don't necessarily want. So we want to use our height field, which is going to uh, be driven through this decimate texture. So we'll create that here in a second, but let's go ahead and set up our scatter. And before I do this, I know that the trees are going to be too big. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust their sizes before I bring them into our scatter. Now, before I did this, I set the trees to be about the same height through the look dev context, just brought them both in and then match their size. So let's drop this first one down to 0 0.1 because I know that's what works for this scene. And then for our second tree, it is twice as big. So we need to reduce that by a factor of 10 as well. So 0 0.2 and now they should be just fine. So let's go over to our scatterer now. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to scroll down to our scattering and under the geometry support, we need to set this to our point cloud because that's what it's, it's looking for uh, some points to scatter your geometry onto. And then we need to set up our trees. So in the geometry here, let's come over to our trees and just bring them both in. Oops, and our black them. There we go. So now we have our trees once they load up you'll see if my program doesn't crash there we go took a second so we have a bunch of trees on our terrain now which is good that's what we're looking for obviously we don't want to see this bright yellow highlight so let's come up to our highlight mode and set that to bounding box so we don't see all of the tree leaves in bright yellow 
So these may still be a little bit big uh, for our terrain, but we can fix that. So let's maybe set the scatter scale down to uh, maybe like 0.8 across the board here. And that looks uh, just a little bit better here. So we also want to add some variance in here. And actually, before I jump into that, if you want to control how much of each object is being scattered, you can come up to this probability section here and you can change this. So if I set this to zero, we won't have any of those trees. If I set this to zero as well. We won't have anything. If I set this to 10%, it's gonna be all of our points because that's all that we have. But if I set this back to 100, now we will have a distribution uh, set based off of the probability uh, that we have set here. So if I set this to 100 as well, we will have 50% of our trees being the black gum and 50% being the ash tree. So we'll just leave it at that for now, but you can change the probability through that. But now we want to add some variation into our trees because they're all the same size and they are all uh, rotated the same direction. So we're gonna adjust that a little bit. So let's add some scale variance. Let's add a uh, point 0.2 and point 0.2 and point 0.2 across each one, each axis. So they're a little bit uh, bigger or smaller. And then for our rotation, let's add a 360 degree variation so that they all rotate uh, around the y axis in a 360 degree angle. So one complete rotation, um, but they're not all that 360 degrees. There is something within that uh, that range between zero and 360. So if I look at these trees as well, there are gonna be all facing straight up, which is not necessarily what you want. You may want them to follow the contours of your, your terrain. So the way that we would do that is we come up to the scattering variation and the support normals. If we set this to 100%, you're gonna see that all of our trees change their orientation and now they're following the normal of the terrain. Now you obviously probably don't want trees coming straight sideways like this. You want them to just have a little bit of that in there. So we'll set this down to something like 5%. And now they have just a little bit of the terrain uh, undulation directing how they are growing. Now, the other thing that we want to do is change how they're being distributed. So obviously we probably don't want trees growing up on the tops of our terrain here, especially if they're like snow covered mountains or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and cover that in the next video. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. It's going to go a little bit more in depth into the, the material view here. Uh, we're going to do some cool things with the height field and will show how we can use things like your um, your slope masks that are exported from your train creation software uh, to actually control the distribution as well. I'm just going to use the height field, but you can do it with, uh, with the train mask or any other mask that you export as well. So keep an eye out for that. But I also have a bunch of other videos on my channel diving into Clarice. So if you missed out on the previous ones, make sure you check those out. If you are just getting started with Clarice, I also have some Houdini tutorials on my channel and some Cinema 4D and Redshift as well. So if you're interested in any of that, I definitely recommend going and checking those out as well. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out and make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos and have a good day.